Hello and welcome to the fourth lecture of Life Processes in Living Organisms Part 1. In the last lecture, we studied the ATP, energy currency and energy production by anaerobic respiration. In this lecture, we are going to study the energy production from different food component. Let us move to the next point that is energy from different food components. Up till now we studied that the energy produced from glucose that is from carbohydrate, proteins and lipids too. We know that in the cellular respiration the complete oxidation of glucose takes place and this process is takes place in the mitochondria. Then if the carbohydrate that we eat in excess amount at that time these carbohydrates these are stored in the liver and in the muscle cells in the form of glycogen. The proteins these are the macromolecules that made up of amino acids. We know that the proteins you know very well how this protein synthesis takes place in the body. Then these are the macromolecules they are made up of different amino acids comes together and they form the protein. Through our diet we get the protein from the plants as well as from the animals. We know that in the pulses the protein is pre present and in the animals too the protein that we get from the animal means from the animal meat or the animal flesh that proteins that are called first class protein. All the proteins that we get from animals that are called first class protein. These proteins are also the rich source of energy. We get near about 4 kilocalorie energy from 1 gram of protein. See, this is the wave diagram given in the textbook. It is of proteins and different amino acids. We know that in the diet we take the proteins from plants as well as from the animals. That protein get digested, they convert to the amino acids, then these amino acids, these are absorbed in the blood and these are transported up to the each and every organ and the cell through the blood. Then these amino acids, these are used by the cell and cell synthesize the different proteins that they require. See, this is the wave diagram. It is in this diagram, the amino acids are used by the organs and the cell and they produce various proteins that are necessary for themselves. It is given. A scene is the protein that is required by the bone and that is synthesized by using the amino acids. Then see, in the blood, the hemoglobin and the antibodies, the, for the synthesis of them, the amino acids are necessary. In the skin, the melanin and keratin is present and for the synthesis of melanin and keratin, the amino acids are necessary. In the muscles, we know that actin and myosin, these are the flexible protein that are present in the muscles and these proteins are synthesized by using the amino acids. In the pituitary gland, various hormones are there and these hormones, these are also synthesized by using the amino acid. In the pancreas, insulin and trypsin is produced and this is also synthesized by using the amino acid. The cell also requires various proteins of cell membrane. We know that cell membrane is also made up of lipoprotein. So, for the production of cell membrane and various enzymes, the amino acids are also required. This is the use of amino acid for different organs to produce different protein. What happens if we take or if we consume the proteins in excess amount? The excess of protein after breakdown converts to amino acids and these amino acids these are not stored in the body. These amino acids again broken down and there is a formation of ammonia and it is eliminated outside the body through the urine. Sometime if the, there is a scarcity of carbohydrates in the body at that time the energy production it is takes place with the help of protein. These proteins these are converted first of all into glucose and this process of conversion of protein into the glucose it is called gluconeogenesis. Again the plant it produces necessary amino acid from the mineral de novo. Plant produces the amino acids from the mineral that is de novo and this mineral 
it is used to produce the different proteins by the plant an enzyme rubisco it is present in the plant chloroplast and it is the most abundant protein found in the nature let us see how the energy production takes place from the lipids we know that the substances which are formed from fatty acids and alcohol there is a specific bonding between the fatty acids and alcohol that substances are called lipids once again i repeat the lipids these are formed from specific chemical bonds between the fatty acids and alcohol so that ultimately when the digestion of lipid takes place the different fatty acids and alcohol that is released once the digestion of lipid takes place the different fatty acids and alcohol that is released and these fatty acids and alcohol that is mixed into the blood and it is that is mixed into the blood and it is transported to each and or every organ or the cell wherever it is necessary from these fatty acids the cell that produces different substances which are necessary for the body for example see the phospholipids these are essential for the production of plasma membrane we know that around the cell the plasma membrane is there and this plasma membrane it is made up of phospholipid so this is formed from the fatty acids fatty acids these are also necessary for the production of hormones like progesterone estrogen testosterone aldosterone and also the covering around the nerve cell in the human beings see very important this fatty acid it is necessary for the production of hormones these are the male and female hormones and the hormones which are necessary for the adolescence these fatty acids these are also present around the nerve cell the covering which is present around nerve cell it is made up of by using this fatty acids these fatty acids these are the richest source of energy we get near about 9 kilo calorie energy from 1 gram of protein then excess of the lipids that if we consumed through diet these are stored in the adipose connective tissue in the body then see how the energy production from vitamins takes place we know that many times if we eat the hot food at that time the inflammation is there in the mouth why it is so we know that it is because of the deficiency of the vitamins sometime some person cannot see clearly in the night that means these are suffering from night blindness why it is so this is also because of the deficiency of vitamins then see what are the vitamins the vitamins these are nothing but vital amines the these are necessary for the body it is a group of heterogeneous compounds of which it is essential for proper operation of various processes in the body it is a heterogeneous compound heteros means different different compounds the group of different compounds the vitamins are group of different compounds and that compounds are essential for the proper operations of various processes that are takes place in the body there are mainly six types of vitamins are there a b c d e and vitamin k out of which vitamin a d e and k these are fat soluble vitamins and b and c vitamins these are water soluble vitamins it means that if we consume the vitamin b and c in excess amount no side effect is there on the body because that are eliminated outside the body through the urine but vitamin a d and e and k we have to consume this in proper amount the nicotinamide and riboflavin these are necessary for the production of nadh2 and fadh2 in the last um, last lecture you studied what is nadh2 and what is fadh2 these are the two enzymes which are produced during the cellular respiration 
so for the production of these enzymes the nicotinamide and riboflavin these vitamins are very very necessary if there is a deficiency of these two vitamins then there is a no formation of nadh2 and fadh2 takes place in the body just like the proteins the lipids the carbohydrates fats all these are necessary for the body just like that water is also necessary for the body we know that if there is a deficiency of water in the body at that time we feel the dryness in the mouth and sometime if the person that experiencing the loose motions at that time the oral rehydration solution it is supplied to the person frequently it contains the more amount of water and some salts and sugar which is necessary for the body we know that in the summer after the heavy exercise we sweat so much at that time the loss of water from the body takes place so we have to rehydrate the body we should maintain the water content present in the body there is near about 65 to 70% water is present in our body and near about 70% water in the cell by their weight means the weight of cell out of that 70% weight it is of water then 90% water it is present in the blood plasma we know that the constituents of blood different cells and a fluid that is plasma in which 90% water is there in the blood plasma water is a very essential for all the functioning of the body so it is also a essential nutrient along with the other nutrient then see next one that is fibers these fibers are also very very necessary for the body we cannot digest the fibers but these fibers they help in the digestion of other substances these fibers these are also very important for the digestion of undigested substance means for the excretion these fibers helps us we we obtain the fibers from the leafy vegetables fruits and cereals so we have to eat them daily if you like my video please like share and subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notifications of next video thank you